All right, guys, so today I'm going to be doing an installation and a review of the MFJ 1982 MP medium power uh, rated at 300 watts uh, in fed uh, half wave. Uh, supposed to be good from 80 meters to 10 meters. All right, here's the antenna out of the package. Nice, neat coil, plastic cover, vents on the bottom. Looks to be some good crimped and soldered connections there, but the way that I'm going to have to mount this is with an eye bolt. And what I did was I took a pair of pliers and I priced it open a little bit, and I'm going to put it through this little quarter inch hole there, which is actually too small. So I'm going to have to drill that hole out to fit the eye bolt and uh we'll let you see what that looks like in a minute all right here it is with the hole drilled out and you see it's a uh, pretty good fit i think i went from a quarter inch hole to a three eight inch hole so ideally when i get it mounted i'm gonna have this eye bolt hanging into the bottom of a the end of a rafter and the matchbox sitting just like you see here and i will take a pair of pliers and uh maybe squeeze this gap together here a little bit but uh i may leave it as it is okay guys here's the slide through insulator that i'm going to be using on this install this um inch and a quarter roughly pvc pipe two holes drilled in it and uh the, the antenna wire will come through just like my finger is and uh, I'll let you see how it works uh, when I get it installed. All right, guys. Uh, Don, KK4QAM here. Uh, today, I have been installing a MFJ 1982 <clears throat> MP 300-watt model in-fed wire. Uh, good for 80 through 10 meters. Uh, it, uh, it's been extremely hot out here today, so I've had to take several breaks and uh, I will uh, show you the final installation, uh, how I've got it all configured, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, this is the final mounting position, so I don't believe that the, the gap will need to be closed up. The ground and the coax will come down from there, and it will basically hang something like this on the final installation. All right, we're back out at the sliding insulator. Here's the end insulator on the end fed. It uh, looks like it was just roughly cut out of a piece of plastic or something, um, kind of in the shape of a leaf. They claim that this will help it go through tree limbs and leaves better. Um, so we'll just have to see about that. Here's my sliding insulator it'll just slide through and uh, hopefully when the wind blows or storms it'll just sway back and forth and let the wire slide in through it all right I don't know if you can see it but right up here around 30 foot is where that floating insulator is and I need to get the wire right straight through there. So that being said, there's nothing better than a bag of rocks to get you lying through the trees. And on the second try, the string goes up and right through the hole that I wanted to. I must be doing something right because it only took me two tries. What I'm hanging it with is a tar impregnated cotton twine that I have found in the local Walmart in the fishing section. I'm guessing it's used for some kind of trot line or, or something similar, but uh, I've had uh, antennas hung up with this for over two years and, and uh, no problems. The only problem is, is if it goes through a tree and there's vines in it, vines will 
grow up the string and you cut the string and the antenna will not come down. All right, I hope you can see that, but uh, if I move too much, the sun will wash it out. But the uh, coax is on the bottom. Uh, it is on the eye bolt. The wire is extended out. And per the MFJ manual, there is a ground that runs along all of my coax to a ground rod. And I do have enough wire stripped out and folded over that the exposed wire goes all the way through and is exposed on the top as well so that I do have a good bond. Uh, the MFJ manual states that uh, you should work, work this antenna against a ground or a 15 to 20 foot counterpoise and the coax is taped with rubber tape as well as uh, electrical tape on the outside uh, oriented just like in the MFJ manual. Alright as far as the orientation uh, the wire is in an inverted V. I hope you can see it. Uh, somewhere in here is the coil. It goes straight out to the uh, sliding insulator, which is located right on this limb here. Now this is a north northeast orientation. When it comes through the sliding insulator, it makes a turn back through here, which orients it uh, due north. Now the feed point is about 10 foot off the ground and the end on the far end with the leaf isolator is uh, around 15 foot. So we'll see what it looks like on the antenna analyzer. All right, I do want to emphasize that you should download the manual from MFJ. They have uh, specific ways of um, connecting the coax uh, about coax links, grounds, counterpoises, etc. in the manual. Uh, they show it as a inverted V, which is which I have mine oriented as. And uh, I know um, my buddy Mike Kate MRD just done a, a video on the low powered uh, version of this and had excellent results in. Uh, uh, receive signals as well as uh, signal reports on the other end. I do not recall if he mentioned using a ground or a counterpoise and I do not remember if he has uh, had it in his video as well. But always try to follow the uh, instructions in the manual. Alright. This is the Ant Scope software that comes with the Rig Expert Antenna Analyzers. I have had the AA-30, which is just the, the, the little processor board that comes out of them, plugged into the USB port. So let's open up here, set full range, and hit OK. You can see down here the little progress is, is taking off and then you'll see the plot alright here's the plot uh, 0 to 30 megahertz uh, 0.9 is 3.33 SWR which is out of the band for this antenna alright uh, 1.19 at 3.6 uh, 7.2 is 1.77 uh, 10.8 is 1.87 at 14.1 uh, 1.44 17.7 is 1.8 one two 
21.3 is 1.47 24.9 is 2.2 and 28.2 is 3.14 so everything looks like it's kind of low in the bands we may have to shorten it just a little bit let's see let's go to 3500 to 4000 see what 80 meters looks like All right, 3.5 is 1.5, 2 is this second line, so 3.78, it starts to get a little bit high, and that 4 megahertz is 3.75, so there again is resonant just a little bit low uh, seven thousand to seventy five hundred that ought to get everything in the forty meter band Not quite as bad as I expected. Uh, CW portion is 2.26 at 7 megahertz. Lowest looks like 7.2 at 1.75 and 7.4 is 2.32. So not all that bad. Could be better. I see. Let's go fourteen thousand to four hundred. Fourteen thousand four hundred. That should get the whole 20 meter band oh that's real good 1.5 roughly to 1.88 out of the band and 1.56 at the beginning of the band. 143. 1.43 looks like the long, lowest SWR in the extra portion. Let's go. Twenty-one thousand to twenty-one five hundred. That should get the fifteen meter band. Oh, look at here. One point five three to one point seven eight outside of the band. 1.4, 1.4, it looks like the lowest SWR towards the extra portion. Twenty-eight thousand to twenty-eight 
29,700. That's the entire 10-meter band. Doesn't look very well. Starting out at 3.83, ending up at 6.71 with the lowest SWR 2.95 at 28.272. So, this may not be a 10 meter antenna. Let's check. Ten thousand to That should get the 30 meter band, if I remember correctly. It seems like I did remember the manual saying that you would possibly need a tuner on the warp bands. So, 4.5 a at 10 megahertz to 3.67 that 4.91 that seems to be the highest at 10.008 megahertz Four eight thousand twenty five thousand. I should get twelve meters. Pretty flat, not that bad. Two point two four. Two point three one, two point two six. So, depending on the radio, it might be usable, but could touch it up with a tuner. Uh, overall, it looks pretty good, just straight out of the box. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. And continue watching, hit subscribe, and the little bell for notifications of new videos. I may not be the fastest of putting videos out, but uh, I'm trying. 7-3, catch you on there.